Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Long awaited return. We've been gone for a while, but we're back. We're back and we're excited. We have a lot to talk about, a lot to discuss. I kind of mentioned this in the last episode as well because we were a little bit late on the upload, but thank you for joining us. Today, we're going to be talking about the illusion of sadness. Is sadness real? Guess you're going to find out. But we have a jam packed episode for you guys today. Sorry about the late uploads and slight inconsistencies. Final exam season just hit. Your boy is done now. So we cooked up. We cooked up. We're doing all right now. Did and we? okay, oh, organic chemistry was a little bit of a different story. Uh, I'm pretty sure all of you um, aspiring doctors, medical s- medical students, and graduate students all know the pain of taking organic chemistry. But everything else we cooked up. We cooked up pretty good. And I think I did fairly well. So I- I'm pretty happy about it. And I genuinely feel like a free man. I feel like Aaron staring off into the clouds. Freedom. Aaron Yeager? Yeah. Like, okay. You know that panel of yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that that's what I feel like. It's it's a good day. We're feeling good. We're happy. And we did something pretty awesome today. Yeah. What do we do? Oh, so we did the Vancouver Sun Run. Uh 2024. It's a ten kilometer race. Not not the craziest thing. I mean I'm not we're not David Goggins, but this was our first official like race, I think. Actually. Timed race. Timed yeah. race. And honestly, it was pretty crazy because so I guess we'll just share our time. So I ran 54 minutes, 25 seconds for my uh, 10K. And you? I think 63 minutes and like 50 seconds, I think. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. But it was odd because I remember I was running on the treadmill and I was like, okay, I have to maintain this pace to hit an hour. I was running that pace, bro. After four kilometers, I was done. I was gassed. I was like, bro, there is no way that it's, humanly possible for me to run this in under an hour hopped on that track or well not track i guess i hopped on the road and i was running and i was running and i was like damn these kilometers are going by pretty fast like i feel like i'm doing this in faster than an hour and then i began because when you sign up for the sun run you sign up as like this is my estimated time to finish so my estimated time was one hour to an hour 45 i think but to be, well, an hour 15 to an hour 45. Yeah, okay. But the reason why is because all the other slots were already yeah, they fully were full. booked. Yeah, we booked like three days before the race. So, yeah, yeah it was, everything was booked. It was hour, oh, it was hour 15? Hour 15. Hour 15 to hour 45. That was our time frame. So, our estimated finish time. So, when I was running, you know, I started looking around. And you get like a colored, like, bib for you to say, like, this is the race that you're part of. So, I was in the purple group. And then I was running. I was like, damn, I'm going pretty fast. I start looking around, and I'm like, damn, there are no purple bibs around me. Everybody was in the group before me. So I was like, oh, I've actually caught up with all these people. And I finished the race, and I looked at the time, and it said hour 17. And I was like, ain't no way I, that was an hour 17. Like, I felt like I was running a lot faster. And then I checked the thing online, and it said my time was 54 minutes. I was, I was really happy about that. But it showed me that by, like, just a change in environment, I can run way faster and way longer. And I think I could probably shave off a couple minutes, too, because I didn't think I was giving that my all. Like, I felt like I definitely could have run faster. So that's so interesting to me that just that change in environment really shifted my time by so much more and my effort by so much more. That's true. Honestly, running it was it was much better than running on the treadmill, to mm-hmm. be honest, because I've certainly done my fair amount of miles on the treadmill. And sometimes I'm sitting there like, damn, I had to run this much for the sun run. There's no way I'm going to be able to do that. But then when I was on the road, I was like, hey, this is not that bad. I had to take a couple of breaks because I did hit a workout yesterday. But to be fair, I, I feel like I probably could have continued to run without stopping. Mm-hmm. And also, like, 63 minutes for the first race, it's not horrendous. Like, I, yeah. I can definitely shave a lot more off. But to those of you who have never done a race but want to be more active, I would strongly recommend doing the Sun Run because— Or doing, like, some kind of 10K race. Yeah, I feel like that's, that's true. such a great that's starting point. Yeah. It's, because, yeah, because 10K is yeah. easy. It's not that hard. You can do it. It's something that I think is, it feels a lot more daunting. If you've never run in your life, 10K feels like a lot. Like, it really feels like a lot. Yeah. Because I've never formally run. I've never really done, like, any actual running. I've only run in, like, sports and stuff like that, and we never really track our running. So when I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to have to run 10K. That's pretty crazy. But once you hit that like road, it's a lot easier than you think it is. And also the environment's really nice. You can you got lots of people on the sides that cheer you on at like every corner. So it's super nice. And just seeing the like mass amount of people running it is just crazy. Like it gives you a lot more motivation to keep going. And it gives you a lot of perspective as to how many people are out there who are leagues ahead of you that you didn't even know existed. Yeah. 
Like, as I ran, I saw people who were, for example, like that one Olympic athlete I was really trying to keep up with for a little stretch. Within 10 minutes, she was gone. She was way past me in terms of like cardiovascular strength. And she was it's crazy. she was vlogging the whole thing too. She was recording like, hey guys, I'm doing the sun run right now, blah, blah, blah. And she just bolted past me. I was like, damn. It's insane. Like the fastest time was at, was 28 minutes or something. Like that. Yeah, t- 10 kilometers in 28 minutes. And for you Americans, that's like six miles in 28 minutes. Yeah. like That's like five, that's six less than sub five minute miles. Yeah. That's insane. It is insane. That's actually like, crazy. That's absolutely crazy and to run that distance consistently without stopping it's insane like i these people are freaks of nature man and it's it's so impressive to see that and i'm thinking like i my ball hockey coach he ran a hundred mile race like a couple weeks ago and i'm like it's always crazy to hear a hundred miles like that's insane but until you actually do one then you're like damn a hundred miles it took him like 30 something hours or something like that he was running for all that time. Well, I mean, of course, they took breaks and stuff. Yeah. But it really puts it in perspective how crazy some of the people in this world are. If you really think about it, your ball hockey coach is pretty much like doing that like preliminary David Goggins race. right? Yeah, there. I know. It's crazy. Except I'm assuming he didn't die because he was also a cardio athlete before that. Too. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, I think that the biggest takeaway for you guys from this experience is that you are capable of a lot and you can find what you're capable of if you put yourself in a position to learn. If you're always going to sit at home and never test yourself, obviously you're never going to know if you're capable of running 10 kilometers in under an hour. You'll never know. So go out there and actually test the water. See what you're capable of and see what you're leaving on the table because I'm sure that 99% of you out there, you got something special. I don't know what it is. Yo, I can't tell that's you. That's messed up, man. Fine. Well, 100%, 100% of you guys out everybody there. Everybody out there. Got everybody something out, there got out there got something special. That's true. That's true. Everybody out there has got something special. And I can't tell you what that is, but I'm sure you'll find it out if you put yourself out there and test the waters. Yeah, that was what we were talking about on the last episode, is that you can do a lot just by going out there and trying new things. Mm -hmm. And especially trying to find your purpose, you can do that by trying different things. Because I literally, I found myself on the, like, Skytrain back. I was like, man, I want to keep running. I want to run, like, a 10K every day. Because I was so pumped up and I felt so good after it, I was like, damn, I really enjoy this. So now running is going to become a much bigger part of my life. I'm definitely going to go for runs a lot more often whenever I have spare time. But that all started from just a random thing, right? Just testing something out. Same thing with table tennis. I never would, in a million years, if you ask grade 10 Nithic, hey man, do you think that you would go to the provincial tournament for table tennis? If I said yes, I would have been out of my mind because I knew for a fact that would never be a reality. I never would have thought that. Yet here I am, guy getting absolutely crushed in the provincial tournament. But guess what? I was there. I mean, to be fair, all the people you played had like three or four coaches. Yeah. It's I think crazy. the funniest sentence you told me from that tournament was when your round was done, you sat with your friends and played Brawl Stars while they were getting coaching tips on, oh, it's this guy's weakness. This is his backhand. Yeah. Uh, export it. Export. Wait, no. Exploit it. That's yeah. the word. They were, they were, they definitely did not like my backhand, bro. They were telling me it was bad. But you know what? They I'll admit. They train like hours a week professionally. Just what do you expect? Fun. But it's funny because you never know where you might end and up. And you still won some of your matches too, which I, is I the funniest like thing. I won like two out of like ten. But that's not a bad record for somebody that's never had training. Yeah. Like, you've never gone to a coach, so yeah, I, I take that. And we, ha- we were supposed to have a coach, but he kind of didn't coach. He played Brussels the whole time. He didn't coach us, so... Yeah, uh, who, if you ever watch this podcast, you know who you are. You sold, buddy. You sold, buddy. We could have done a lot better at that tournament. But side, tra- oh, I'm getting back on track. Jumped your dash. Damn, I'm side tangenting again. But your brain works in a fully very interesting back way. on track okay. on the train tracks. The only way that you find these new hobbies is just by trying things. Mm. So I'd say don't be afraid to go out there and try the things in life. Life has so many things to offer. There are infinite number of things to do. So why not test the waters? Because you never know what it might hold. He cooking. He cooking. Mm. And now, ladies and gentlemen, side tangents aside, intro aside, let's get into it. The illusion of sadness. Now, you were the one who decided that we were going to talk about this. Yeah. And you said this last week in the episode. So tell me, what made you want to talk about this so bad? I feel like, first off, it's one of the biggest things we talk about is the idea of perspective. That's the whole, you know, thing about Bright Horizons is that it, what things are is not what, or what things seem to be, seem to be is not what they always are. Mm -hmm. Or 
really whatever you make it seem to be is what it is, right? And sadness, I find, is something that we find so hard to deal with because you almost, I don't feel like a lot of people are ever really prepared to deal with sadness. It's something that will always strike you at the worst time, shocker, right? When you're at your weakest. So how do you really combat something that attacks you when you're at your weakest? It's like, how would you deal with being super sore when you're really sick, right? It's like, bad thing happens, and now there's more on top of that. So how do you combat that? And I feel like the way you combat it is, of course, within your own mind. Because all of this is, you know, situated within your own brain. And that's the beauty of it, is that you have full control over it. While many people might try to tell you that you don't, I think you do. And I actually want to jump into this really, it was a cool kind of experiment. And I saw Tony Robbins do it with Theo Vaughn. Like, I never would have expected to see this. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yep. Uh, well, but I'm gonna... here's the thing, right? Yeah. I might know, but those of you that don't know, let them cook and pay attention to it. This was a fascinating story the first like, time I Because I remember it. I was sitting in band class and this caught me. But anyway, so what they did was, it's Tony Robbins and Theo Vaughn. I'm going to fully credit them with this idea, but I'm going to tell you all at home to do this right now. So wherever you are, you're sitting in your bed or you're sitting at your desk or you're at work or at school, don't watch YouTube while you're at work or school. But on the off chance that you are, sit down right now, look around the room, and see if you see anything brown. So let's take a look, you know. All right, come back to me. What did you see? You probably saw a lot of brown things. Mm -hmm. Things that you didn't notice were brown before. Mm -hmm. And now, I want you to look for some red things. Look around the room, see if you see any red. I come back. So I'll tell you right now that even myself, knowing the experiment, I looked up at that poster and I looked up at Hisoka's hair. And I said, that's red. That ain't red, that's pink. That top corner, I thought that that's red. But that's really maroon. What our mind does is when you're asked to look for something, you look for anything to confirm that bias. It's confirmation bias. So similarly, if you spend your whole life looking for happiness, Guess what, my friend? You will find it. Whatever you search for will appear to you. And even things that may not seem to be, or, well, what aren't exactly what it is, it will seem to be what you believe it to be. Same way I thought that that maroon is red. Really, it's not, but to me, it still counts. So if you go out into your life looking at sad things in a depressed manner, looking for the sad in everything, then you're going to see a hell of a lot of happy things that are going to reveal them or appear to be sad to you. And I know this firsthand in my life because way back, I'd say grade 6 to 10, I was a very sad individual. I'd say that. I looked through the world through a very dim lens, a very, very blue period kind of lens, like Picasso. And I felt like my life sucks. And that statement, that statement is what dug me in that trench. My life sucks. By constantly repeating that to myself, I was telling myself that my life is terrible. What I have sucks. I feel sadness. I'm going to feel sadness. Everything is sad. But once I started to flip that switch and start looking at things like, you know what? My life is pretty damn great compared to a lot of people out there. It made me feel way happier about my life. It made me see the great things that I have. It made me generate gratitude for myself and I felt way better throughout my life because I was looking for the things that made me happy the things that confirmed my identity because now I'm identifying as a happy person right I see myself through that lens through the lens of a happy person I'm gonna look for the things that confirm that bias that's true that's true but you want to know something very fascinating that you did hmm. Do, okay let me ask you this is that exactly how they said it in their episode or is that how you recall them saying it it was relatively similar but i changed a couple things yeah interesting yeah because what you did is essentially the same thing that university students do with research papers where they oh. take an experiment that somebody did and they extrapolate results from it so the way you explained it was very different from how well not very different but a little bit different from how they did it because what tony robbins did was he asked the ovan to look around the room for everything that was red mm -hmm. and as he looked around he found all the things he counted all the red things then Tony Robbins said, okay, did you look? He's like, yeah. Then he said, okay, tell me how many brown things you saw. Oh. That's, that's what he said. Was, and yeah, then yeah, Theo Vaughn yeah. was like, zero. And he's like, 
Exactly. If you live your whole life looking yeah. for the sad That's things, you won't see the happy things. But the interesting point mm. in this whole scenario is you were able to draw your own conclusions mm. from that. And I think that's a very good skill and arguably better than just copy pasting what they said. You get what I mean? Yeah, I know. But interestingly enough, that also, it, you know, it has an official name, I think. Don't quote me on this. But I think the official name for this idea is red is the red car theory. Because if you drive on the road looking for red cars, you will see more red cars. Mm -hmm. The funny thing about this is that some people might look at this example and say, oh, that's stupid. Like, it just, your brain wasn't looking for it, so obviously it's not going to see it. Like, there's no scientific basis for that. But if you take it in the most mathematical way, look at probabilities. What is the probability of you seeing a red car if you are ac actively searching for a red car? Pretty high. But if you're not looking for one, of course you're not going to see it. The same yeah. way I get punched 62 times when driving you to school because you will see 62 punch buggies because you're looking for them. Mm -hmm. I, don't get to, I don't get to punch you even though we're in the same car. That's the crazy That's, thing. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. seeing the same thing, but I'm the one getting punched. Why? Because I'm not looking for the punch buggies because I'm looking at the road. Mm -hmm. So we're experiencing the same situation. Just but observing. Exactly. Different observing different things because we're looking for different things. And that's the beauty of being sad in general is that a lot of today's society has decided that, you know, as we continue to evolve our understanding of emotions, we begin to believe that it's rooted in science so we have no change over it. Now, don't get me wrong. My major is based on science in school. I learn about sci the scientific methods, scientific procedures. Everything has to be very accurate in the world of science. But even I, as somebody who follows these procedures very closely, I still believe in the power of the spirit. Now, maybe not, I wouldn't put it that way specifically, but some things are kind of supernatural. For example, how do parents lift cars if their kid is like trapped under one? Yeah, that's adrenaline. Like, buddy, yeah, come on. Okay, there fine. Were, there let, were let, better okay. examples. Okay, fine, that, fine, fine. Let me find a better example. No, I would say, I mean, I think it actually does have a scientific basis. Which but, one? But, like, dealing with happiness and sadness, I think it does have a scientific basis. Okay. But not in the way that people think. I think it's a very controllable scientific basis. Okay, you're going to have to elaborate on this. So one. I'm going to elaborate on that by bringing down this new book of the week called, uh, titled Habits of a Happy Brain by Loretta Granzio Bruning, Ph.D., there you guys go. Oh, wow, look at that. Book of the week. I picked it up at the library. Yeah, people still use libraries, guys. But in this book, it discusses how to increase your serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin, and endorphin levels. So actual, the physical, the actual physical chemicals. And there's a lot of good things in this book that I really, really like, and I really enjoy reading it so far. I'll give you guys an update when I'm actually done the book. I haven't read the whole thing. But extrapolating from this book, I can see that we are the ones that dictate how these levels actually affect our lives. Mm -hmm. So you, the reason we feel like happiness is usually after a reward, right? After you get a reward is when you start to feel happy about something. That it's like a, it's a trigger that leads you to get probably like dopamine. That's why, you know, so many times we're scrolling is because you feel a reward every time you scroll. That's why you get that little shot of dopamine. So you keep doing that, keep doing that. That's your dopamine. But if you rewire yourself to find dopamine in a new place... You can find happiness in a new place. The two go hand in hand. But when people are like, oh, I can't control it, it's quite the complete opposite. The science says that you can control it. That's the funny thing is that, you know, a lot of people are, now I, I don't know enough about clinical depression to tell you, like, everything about it, whether it's real or not. But I think that we are all masters of our own mind. And it might be more difficult for you to achieve a level of mastery as somebody else, but shocker, that's kind of life. Right? It's not fair for everybody. It's going to be more difficult for other people. But to sit there and give up and say, I can't do it, is probably the first step to sadness. First step to depression. The first step to success is to identify yourself as a happy person. Because guess what? You're going to start finding a lot more happy things in life. That's very true. You know something very interesting I thought about when you said that life isn't fair? I recently had a conversation with probably one of my closest friends that I have today. And it was regarding the unfairness of life. And 
I took a particular problem with the way that some people are making money nowadays because there are some dirty ways to resort to making money. Now, of course, my definition of dirty money is if it causes suffering or degeneracy in society, okay? I think that's a fair definition, at least in my eyes, right? So biggest one was obviously, you know, selling something that's illegal, okay? Substances, whatever else you could name. But the other one is something that's very, very pervasive in today's society. Obviously, you know, like on social media, literally, I can't say that. That's it's, it's kind of inappropriate. But selling any sort of inappropriate content of yourself or somebody else, personally, I don't agree with that. And I think that a lot of men, especially nowadays, have the opinion that, oh, women live, it, live life on easy mode because we see all of these people resorting to these ways to make money. And as I sat there and I thought about you know, life is kind of unfair because people get to resort to these ways and do it. Well, the truth is we chose to do it the right way, right? Obviously I could go and do all these things and make my money illegally. I could trap, I could sell illegal things. I could drive a Hellcat all day if I wanted to, but I don't. Hey, hey, not a, not a shot at all had Hellcat owners. Okay. Just listen, man, you drive a trapper's car. If you drive a trapper's car, that's on you. I'm just, I'm just saying the stats, how I say the stats. Okay. But yeah, it's statistics. Okay. It's math. All right. But the point is, why did we choose to do it the right way? Because we have a moral compass because we decided, Hey, this doesn't align with my character and my values. And it was that one quote I talked about several episodes. Do you know know it? Okay. Where is it from? Let me. It's the one from Teen Titans where Robin's talking to the witch. He's cooking. Dude, I saw that quote the other day, and I was like, I'm so glad you brought this quote up because I really love it. It was so good. And for those of you that watched the episode, you'll remember. But to those of you that didn't, the quote was, just because somebody else went and did it the easy way doesn't mean that you should not do it the right way. Mm -hmm. And that's a witch talking to Robin and telling him, I don't really know if you could call her a witch, but I I don't remember the full context of that episode. But the biggest point is that don't get discouraged if you see people making progress faster than you in ways you wouldn't want to make money in the first place. And that's something that actually bothered me for a little bit there. Like I, I had to sit there and really, what's the word for it? Deal with the fact that some people are out there cheating the system. Well, not really cheating the system, but just resorting to quite low and dirty tactics to make money. But I just decided, you know what? I'm on my own path. And that's yeah. one thing. You kind of have to learn to put on blinders is what they're called. Did you know that they do this for horses? It's a fascinating story. I didn't know this. But when horses are racing, they put two little blockers here, and they call them blinders. The reason why is because they don't want the horse to look at the horses on the right and left. Because if he sees this horse slowing down, it could change the way that he decides to move. Uh, so they put I the see. blinders on and say, you know what? You just focus on yourself. You go, you go, you go. Mm. And I think that's something that we all got to learn because over time, you got to learn that in life, it's just you, right? It's just what your ambitions are, your dreams. Now, that doesn't mean like forget everybody and just- It means it's you versus you. Exactly. In this world, it's you Don't compare you. yourself yeah. to others. And that even me, who pr- is preaching, essentially, talking about these ideas, I'm not perfect. I'm only human. We all are. None of us are God, right? We're not perfect in any way, shape, or form. But the thing is to learn to be able to cast aside things that don't help you. And one of those things is looking at others, right? And the other thing is the the weight of negative emotions, I'll say. Because you can't cast aside negative emotions, in my opinion. Because the best way to describe it is that you are the sky. Negative emotions are like clouds. They will come. They will go. They may pepper the sky and they may fill it. But at the end of the day, they come and they go. Now tell me, as the clouds leave, does the sky leave too? No. Why is that? Because they're two very different entities. So you can't identify with sadness. Why? Because regardless of how many clouds there are in the sky, when they're gone, the sky still will be there. Damn, that's crazy. And also, you know, the other day, or not the other day, earlier today, I just, we were sitting down and we were talking about the weather and how quickly the weather changed because yesterday it was raining like hell and then out of nowhere it just stopped raining. And of course, you could just credit that to BC being, you know, the the rainy Rainy land of Canada. Yeah, exactly. But I wrote this down and I said, similar to how clouds may part on a whim to reveal clear skies, your clouded mind can reveal clear thought by your command. 
And we were sitting on the bus, and we were just like, damn, you know, these skies, they just switch on and off like that. We always feel, uh, uh, oh, actually, you know what? I just had a crazy thought because I remembered something. I didn't even write it down. I wanted to talk about it. But so yesterday I was working. And, you know, just a chill chef, nothing much happening. But it was raining. So everybody coming through the drive through is kind of, you know, low energy. It's a rainy day. One guy comes in, and he just orders. You know, he's, he's speaking with that happy voice. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, man, I am so excited to talk to this guy. And then this car rolls up to my window, and, you know, there was some errors with their stuff, and then we had to fix it, and then I sent them along. And then my manager called me out front. So I talked to him, and then I ran back, and the guy had drove to the next window. And I never got to speak with him. You should have ran. Which made me sad, but I had to take the next car's payment and then the next couple of orders. So I was really sad that I never got to talk with him. But that one thing, it made me realize that we are influenced so much by our surrounding, yet it is a complete separate body from us, right? Obviously, we know that. We know that we and, or I guess yourself, is very separate from everything around you. You're like a closed, isolated system. And Sorry, Mike, but... Everything around you is just extra. It's not really you. There's a quote that says that the same boiling water that makes an egg hard makes something else soft. And I can't remember what it is. It has to be the other way around. Oh, pasta. Sure. Makes pasta soft. Sure. Oh, yeah. I guess that is true. Because egg starts as liquid. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that's true. And it's... I saw this from like, it's like, uh, it was a school teacher and they walked up to like, yo, what's the quote of the day? And then that's what he said. And he said, don't let your environment dictate you. So, or I guess it should be you dictate how the environment affects you. Yeah. You could choose to be an egg or you could choose to be pasta, right? That's true. So in life, when these obstacles and challenges are placed in front of you, don't, or I guess the, these things are around you. Don't let them influence who you are inside. If you are sure of your identity and who you are meant to be, then what happens around you is completely external. It has nothing to do with you. So if you live with the idea of a positive identity, then you're not going to feel the effects of the sad environment around you Mm -hmm. because you're able to smile through it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're ending the episode early. Message is be an egg, don't be pasta. No, I'm kidding. Yo. That's a, that's a pretty you, good... I was genuinely shocked. I was dude, honestly no, like, Obviously, yeah. I'm not going to end the episode. We still got time, ladies and gentlemen. I'm yeah. sure you guys are enjoying but this conversation. But that could be a pretty good quote. Don't be an egg, be pasta. Or choose to be an egg or pasta. We're, we're writing that down. Yeah. That trademarked. If you guys use this in a conversation... Just say, choose to be an egg or choose to be... Next time that your friend is really sad from oh, something yeah. that happened, walk up be like, choose to be an egg or be a pasta. And then walk away. And they're going to look at you very confused, but you know what? You one, know you want that One argument. day they'll understand. One day. One day they'll grow up to understand. It. Exactly. But it's funny that these uh, quotes all, like, they're, 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 it actually has meaning to it. That's what's yeah. funny, is that there's actually meaning to that, and yet it's so goofy. Yeah, but, but that's, that's yeah. the beauty of life. You know, you, you can find meaning in a lot of things. Mm. But that quote, you know what it reminded me of? Mm. It reminded me of Tom Platt's in the gym saying, you can't be a victim to your genetics. Your genetics must be a victim to you. Damn. That's something that always sticks with me because Tom Platts was one of the most hardworking bodybuilders I've ever seen. Why do you think everybody calls him the quad father? Because he has insane legs and he worked to the point of death. Like it, 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 Genuinely, if you've ever done a Tom Platts leg day, props to you. Because I've done it before. It is not for the weak. It is a, a difficult, difficult set of exercises and the reason why you do it is to toughen your mind and to make sure that you're an egg and not pasta and that's the beauty of it egg or pasta what why oh i guess you're toughening your mind exactly yeah, smart, you smart, want smart. to be the egg in this situation yeah. not the uh, pasta. you know so on the topic we were talking about like unfair ways to make money mm-hmm. and one thing i hear a lot of people saying is like oh that person got lucky and i'm gonna bring up a quote i'm pretty sure you already know this quote but it's from a very wise individual. And the quote is, the only shortcut to life is to show up every day because sometimes you get lucky and you'll never miss a lucky day if you try every day. Do you know who said that? 
Okay, a wise man. Okay, <laughs> just from I your mean, face. I mean, he's he's kind of wise. I'd say he's kind of wise. Is he bald? Is he bald? Answer the question quickly, quickly. Yes. Does he have a mustache? I mean, yeah. Steve Harvey? No. Doctor Phil? No. Wait, no. You're going. Oh, never mind. I don't know. Yeah, you may be kind of cooked. I don't know. He doesn't really. Okay, whatever. Tell me who this wise old sage is. He ain't old, bro. It's Andrew Tate. Damn, I threw myself off with the bald guess. No. I thought, like, he's kind of the bald guy. Wait. No, no he's not. the bald guy is Ang, Saitama, and Dr. Phil. And Steve Harvey. <laughs> why, is, why are you so obsessed with Dr. Phil and Steve Harvey? Where did they come in? Like, okay. No, because Steve Harvey has said, damn, I'm going to say this quote now, but I guarantee you. Not that many people will watch this. So one day I'll use this quote as a quote of the day in a future episode. And those of you that know I said it here, y'all are day ones. But the quote from Steve Harvey, wait, I wait, believe, wait. is... Actually, you're day 19s, but continue. So week 19s. One. Whatever. We love you guys. Yeah. Point is, I think Steve Harvey was the one that said, luck is what you get when preparation meets opportunity. Mm, and damn, th- I love that quote so much because... If you're not prepared to take advantage of an opportunity that is bestowed upon you, obviously you won't capitalize on it even if God gave you the most perfect opportunity. Yeah. Let's say you're whining about not having a girlfriend. Boom. You're walking to school one day. You see the most gorgeous girl you've ever seen in your entire life and you know you have to go talk to her. But you don't have the balls to go say anything. <laughs> you blew it. Who knows? Maybe she could have been your future wife. You could have had two kids with her and lived a happy life. But why? Because you weren't ready. Yeah. There was no preparation. It's the same way, like some, like a lot of lottery winners actually kind of like throw their money away. Yeah, because they don't know how to spend it. Mm-hmm. And I'm not gonna say like, oh, you know, if you don't, if you win the lottery, you just ain't lucky like that. But um, if you win the lottery and you don't know how to spend your money, a lot of people are gonna run out. Like they run out of their money because they don't know how to spend it. They don't know how to invest it. They don't ha- know how to make a better future with it. So really, luck is useless without the. Uh, Preparation. Yeah. And I think that that was a great quote, man. Yeah. That but one day we'll we'll bring that up. And that's probably going to be a future episode. So mm-hmm. stay tuned for that. But yeah. in the meantime, let's get back to what we were talking about today. Mm-hmm. So the illusion of sadness. You want to know one thing, actually, that I just thought about? When you came up with that quote, I began to think that you're becoming more and more of a philosopher. And I feel like you should write a book one day. I think that would, that would go cr- kind of crazy. I feel like you have some interesting insights. I think I do. I would love to write a book, the Brighter Horizons book. Don't I wouldn't call it that, but well, I'm saying just that, a you know, placeholder. Yeah, it's just a placeholder name. Fair but play, I, fair play. You know, uh, you want to know another quote? Mm-hmm. And I guarantee you, you will never guess who said this. Oh, God. It's a very simple quote, but the quote is that bad news is just good news in disguise. Okay? Now, I'm going to give you... I'll give you... Actually, I'll give you... Uh, I want you to guess this. Just I want you to me, try and guess. Just it. give me three okay, guesses. It's, it's so a I don't fictional take character. Okay. Who's green? Who's green? Yeah. The character himself is green. He's green. It's not the clothes he wears. He is no, just he green. He is a green person. Well, Beast I boy? wouldn't call him a person. Beast Boy? It was not Beast Boy. Oh. It's a good guess, but. Martian Manhunter? They are not from DC. Okay. Is he from Marvel? He's not a superhero. <laughs> Damn. Okay, I mean, I'm you cooked. know, maybe some people would consider him a superhero. <laughs> I. Would say he's not a superhero. Is he from like a superhero like nope. scene? He is from a he's from a movie, uh what's it called? A saga? Okay. A trilogy? Like, no, no, it's not a trilogy. It's more than five movies. That's what a trilogy is? A trilogy oh or more than three, sorry. Yeah. A saga I think is five movies. Oh, so trilogy try. That makes so much sense. How wow. do you not know that? I feel like a very, very stupid person yeah, right now. That's like okay, come on. He's a green guy from a I think it's a I think it's five movies now. But uh, there's a there's this one guy. You know what? I'm gonna give you one hint. Okay. Okay. Nut. <laughs> Boss. Yeah, that Bro. is my hint. That's my hint. Come on, man. I'm not even joking. That was the only hint you could give me. It's a pretty good hint if you really nut. Know. Yeah. N U T nut. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. We're Who cooked. always has like a a nut? <laughs> I'm telling you, like you'll actually you can guess it from that. I'm cooked. I don't yeah, know. What I'll this give is. you another hint. 
Mark Rober. I'll give you one more hint. Oh my god. Backyard. Squirrels. Okay. okay who's a, the most famous squirrel ever? The fat one. What's his name? What? Is it is that not the one we're talking about? I'm not he's not from Mark Rober. The most famous squirrel? Squirrel of all time. Who? Scaredy squirrel? Who the hell is that? You don't know who, who Scary is Squirrel is? Scary Squirrel. Oh my god. Sorry, headphone warning. I just screamed so yeah. loud. Okay, come on, man. You don't know Scary Squirrel? Who's Scary Squirrel? The books Scary Squirrel that we read in elementary school. Scary Squirrel. No idea. Everybody knows Scary Squirrel. If you know Scary Squirrel, drop I a comment. Don't know I guarantee you at least 10 people who watch this video will know Scary Squirrel. No I way. I never watched, I had no idea. But that is not the most famous squirrel. The most famous squirrel ever. Who is the most famous squirrel ever? Since when was there a famous squirrel? Who doesn't know him? He's the squirrel. And he's green. No, he's not green. <laughs> the guy, other guy in the movies are green. But he is a squirrel. He's like... I... Okay, you know what? Just tell me. We're taking so long for this. Sid from Ice Age. <laughs> <laughs> How? Dude. Come on. He, Scrat is the most famous squirrel of all time. It's not even close. You're telling me one of your hints wasn't ice? No, because that was too obvious. Clearly, you should have given me that. Yeah, I was nowhere near. Bro. Dude, you said the words green and nut. Yeah. Green like, and like, nut. He has, he's always, Scrat always has a nut, and he like split the, the contents If anything, with it. Scrat never. He's, he's always looking for a nut. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like a big plot point. But yes, yeah, Sid said that, actually. You're telling me that was wide-eyed sloth came up with that quote. Yep. I don't know his granny told it to him before she got eaten by a whale. And then survived. Yeah, and, I think. Yeah. Something like that. But I say just honestly a goaded. It's so good. Goaded franchise. I Absolutely guess you could call amazing. It. It's beautiful. But yeah, that was such a great quote. Wow, that is a crazy side tangent. But honestly, the fact you don't know Scaredy Squirrel. Yo, the fact you didn't, you can guess it is absolutely insane. Okay, l be honest. As a viewer, did you think... Of Sid the Sloth or Ice Age in any way, shape. Look at his face. No, okay, listen. That's a guilty face right there. You're different. Like, you should be on my wavelength. I am on your wavelength. That just means it's even worse. Your description was not good, buddy. Okay, you know, maybe. Maybe it wasn't. How green and nut. That's all I gotta Yo, say. Yo, chill, bro. That's all I gotta say. Anyways, okay, going back all the way to what I said before this, when I was talking about you becoming a philosopher and potentially writing a book one day, the reason why I thought about that was one group of people that really embodied... The fact that sadness is not a permanent thing were the Stoics. Yeah. Think about it. I Personally, my term for the Stoics were the masters of the mind. Or, yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good term for them because they began to understand how life works, or at least the philosophy of life. And one thing that Stoics used to do is they used to keep skulls on their table that they used to write at because they wanted to remind themselves of the impermanence of life. As you go through life, there are going to be days that suck. There are going to be days that are good. But at the end of the day, you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> and in the grand scheme of things, look at the large universe that has been here for millennia. Your existence is nothing but a grain of sand. So in that tiny grain of sand, do you really have the time to be worrying about somebody cutting you off in traffic or bombing one test? It's not the end of the world, man. Your existence already is so small. So that tiny event within your existence is even smaller. Don't put so much emphasis on the small negative things that happen to you. You're going to die one day. So enjoy your life every day while you can. Yeah. That is the most important lesson in life. I, really, I love your analogy. The presentation might have been a bit crazy there. but Listen, I got to be controversial somehow. That's one yeah, problem. No, but it's true though. I think the idea of impermanence leads us to... Have like, for example, when you know that something is gonna go, mm -hmm. you have a lot more, there's a lot more weight to it. Yeah. You know, you like, people always ask the question, like, oh, suppose you had one day to live in infinite money, what would you do? And you think about that. And what I'd say to those people is, you know, why not chase doing those things? Cause like, right ever, now. like, right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, not right now, because obviously, maybe you wanna fly to the other side of the world. You ain't got the motion for that right now. Okay, but no, but you is, mean like chase it yeah, so you can work for right? it. 
how can you change your life to reach that? Mm -hmm. So reflecting on the idea that, damn, I'm not going to be around forever. That not that what I have won't be here forever. Embrace that idea and think, how can I get to where I want to be? What would I want if what I have isn't? That's a good quote. Oh, well, a good idea. I Say think, it again. Is what would I want if what I have isn't? Yo, that, that yeah for that. Yeah, I that might was, have to actually. Okay, that was kind of fire. Yeah, write honestly, write problem. that one down. That was we that was kind of fire. But you know, one thing I was gonna say is, how different would your life be if you stopped imagining what you do with a million dollars and start getting that million dollars? That's my question. Because mm. you and your friends are going to sit here and play this would you rather game or imagine this situation game. Why not just make it happen? That's the beauty of life. You have the opportunity to make it happen. You need to go out there and work for it. Life is very giving. If you, yeah. put, in, if you put in the hours and effort, you're going to get things back. For example, our last episode did not do insanely well. You know why? Because I haven't posted shorts in the past week too consistently for two reasons. Main one being the final exams. But two, I got a little bit, just a little bit discouraged from posting on TikTok because we got shadow banned. Funny enough, I didn't think that was a real thing before I started making videos. But then as I started making videos, one day, our average viewers from went from like 600, and, 600 to 800 range, like on average, dropped from that to around 10 views that's per video. Crazy. And that's been the case for the past two and a half weeks. I don't know how to get out of it, and if you have TikTok and you don't follow us, I would greatly appreciate your support to help us get out of this rut, but I realize that it's just consistency. I just got to keep going, and eventually, like I said, those black clouds that pepper the sky will be gone, and the sky will remain, because we're not going anywhere. We're going to stay here for good. We're going to keep pushing these positive messages, but the main thing is don't let life get you down, because life is always good. And don't be so rooted in what you think is great. Mm. If you stick to thinking that this is good, this makes me happy, and this makes me sad, you're going to live a not, I, I wouldn't say a bad existence, because I think it's that you need to be adaptable. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to change. And one quote that I heard is that it says, normal is an illusion. What is normal to a spider is not normal to a fly. Suppose that a fly gets caught in a spider web. Mm. For 99% of that fly's life, he never flew in any spider webs. But for that spider's life, a or 99% of the time, flies have been flying into his web. So this spider is living his whole life around flies flying into the trap. This fly has lived his life 99% of the time, never flying into a trap. So these two people, simultaneously in that event, are one is experiencing familiarity, while the other is experiencing uh, what's a what's the antonym for familiarity? I feel terrible right now. It's feeling something different in their life, okay? Unf oh, it's just unfamiliarity. There you we go. are very stupid Yeah, we today. might be not very smart. I think but the 10K drained your brain cells. It might have. But the premise is that we all walk around with the basis of what is normal to us. But that's the thing. Normal is an illusion. It's not real. What is perceived is never what's really true. Because perception is varied from each person to person. Mm -hmm. Similarly, happiness is an illusion. Sadness is an illusion. All of these things are not real, yet we live with it to be. Same way, this is actually from Avatar, is they say that the separation of the four nations is an illusion, as they're all one people, but they live as if they're divided. Mm. And, or, I... You know what's crazy is all my life, I thought that the swamp guy said that. But it was actually Guru Patik that said that. Really? That's why he's the GOAT. Shout out my boy Guru Patik. Yeah, on, absolutely, honestly the goat. absolutely love that guy. But it's funny because we're surrounded by illusions, yet we've been taught to believe that they're real. And it goes back to a quote that says, if you tell a big enough lie and repeat it enough times, people will come to believe it as a truth. And it's cool because that's from a Prince Ye video. And he mm -hmm. talks about race in that video. And I'd urge you all to go watch it because it's very, it's very interesting because it debunks the idea of race and that race isn't a real thing. What we think is, you know, race is actually just pigment. 
and we divide ourselves based on our skin color, but it really actually has no meaning. Because way back in the day, people didn't discriminate each other based on where they were from or the color of their skin. They did it based on their cultural traditions. So uh, if a person with darker pigment and lighter pigment both had lived the same life, they would have seen each other as equal. Until during the slave period, they wanted to separate all the, you know, the slaves. They, were, they created the idea of race. But in that idea, they showed that now, things don't have to be real for you to believe it. Mm-hmm. Similarly in life, what you... I feel like I've said similarly in life so many times in this episode, but it's such a good lead into a sentence. I think that every person has mannerisms in the yeah. way they talk. Like, it's just... We have kind of like our secret arsenal of words, and we mm-hmm. pull out our favorite one anytime yeah, we need exactly. to make a certain sentence work. But that's yeah. just how everybody talks, I would definitely you know? say so. But what I think is... Oh, man, I lost my train of thought. But yeah, illusion, illusion. Big thing is that a lot of these ideas, these principles just aren't real. Mm-hmm. And it's what you perceive it to be that makes it what it is. You know the fantastic thing I was going to say about your analogy? I mm-hmm. was about to say the idea, and then you said it for me, is that people have begun to confuse the idea of race with culture. Yeah. It's, it's genuinely disappointing to me because I took a genetics course, and I honestly loved this course. It was fascinating. Like It was the first course I actually got interested in. It might just be the way that the teacher presented it, that's another thing I want to talk about on a future episode, how much mentors can affect your life and the way you view things. But this one teacher I had, shout out my boy Kevin Lamb, honestly, the GOAT, love this guy so much, great teacher. And he was very enthusiastic about it. And in one of the slides, I'm not going to say this is the exact number because I don't remember how many zeros it was, but all humans, biologically speaking, based on genetic material, are zero point zero 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 one percent different we are all the same we are quite literally the same species and identical the only difference is just like you said pigment so to treat somebody else as different simply because of the culture they follow mm-hmm. is absurd and you know the best example of that look at us our parents are from sri lanka but why do we speak as if you know if i if i hid my face right now and I ask somebody just based off of my voice, guess what color my skin is? I'm willing to bet money they would not say brown. Yeah, They wouldn't be able to tell. Why? Because I was born and raised here. So how can you possibly discriminate against me if you are like a born and raised Canadian and let's say you had white skin, for example, how can you discriminate against me if you can't even tell the difference when I'm talking to you? Because we're the same. We're one of the same people. And even Bruce Lee said it himself that we under the great blue sky we are all but one people. Mm. And I love the idea of not judging people based off of first impressions because you never really know. And I'm going to tell a story about somebody that I saw, and it was the other day. I was super tired, and we're on our way back from Vancouver, and we stopped by Fresh Street Market to grab some milk. So I go in there, and I grab the milk and because my dad asked me. He's like, hey, can you go grab the milk? I was like, okay. So he gives me his card. Go in there, grab the milk, go to pay and I see the person at the counter, and I'm like, I feel like I recognize this person. And I wasn't sure, like I was not sure if they were the same person that, that goes to my school. So they were like, hey, how's your day going? Uh, like, how you doing? And they were being super friendly. And this is at like 7 o'clock at night. So like, it's already kind of getting late. I felt really low energy, and I was just like, yeah, it's good, good, yeah. And then he's like, you want a bag or anything? And I was like, no, no, I'm fine. And I was being super low energy. And then I pay for the milk, I pick it up, and I start walking away. And then as I'm walking away, she's like, I love your podcast, by the way. And then I was like, it is the person. So I was like, thank you so much. Walk back to the car, put the milk down. And then my dad, like, no, he rolls down the window. And I reach and I'm like, I'm putting the milk in the car through the window. I don't know what I'm doing. And then I'm like, why can you unlock the door? And he's like, oh, I need you to go grab some ice cream as well. So I go back into the Uh. fresh street. And, like, I made sure to walk around the far way so I didn't walk past the cashiers because yeah. I thought it would be really awkward. So I walked past around the long way, grabbed the ice cream, came back in the line. And then I had a chat with her, and I was just like, um, and mind you, I never actually had a conversation with this person. Mm. I think I had one conversation in, like, grade nine with them. Interesting. But, uh, like, I never really talked to this person. And then I, you know, I bought the ice cream. And then I actually responded with a smile, and I was like, you know, how's your day going to? And then um, I walked away. And it was interesting because this person, supposedly, if they do watch the podcast, they would see this. But um, I didn't think that they were that kind of a person. Mm. 
And I'll admit that. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not perfect either. I still judge people sometimes as hard as I try not to. But this, like, moment was a big reflection for me. Because as I walked to the car, I sat down. And I had a smile on my face all the way to the car. And I was like, damn. Because they were really friendly. Like, super friendly. Like, I would say, one of the friendliest people I talked to. Mm. A very nice smile the whole time. And was really happy. And I walked to the car and I was like, I never imagined this person to be like that. Mm. Like, not once did I look at this person and think that looks like she would be a very friendly person to talk to. And I know that sounds really bad for my part, but it made me realize like, you can never know. You should never look at somebody and take an assumption of who you think they might be because what you think is just something you created in your mind. I created a persona of this person without even knowing them. And now that persona is broken and I'm very glad about that. But it's taught me that you shouldn't do that in life. To never go around and put a label on something you don't know. Because truthfully, these things, they, you know, these concepts in your mind, they don't, they aren't really the truth. And I'm going to take it back to the idea of this episode, which is the idea of illusion. And that illusion is, it's everywhere. So I was, you know, I had the illusion of this person's personality in my head, but it wasn't real. And imagine if I had continued to believe that illusion throughout that interaction. I probably would have been a very sad person both times. I never would have looked to see, oh, God, I know this person sucks. So I'm just going to you know, put my head down and walk by. But instead, I was really, I instead opened my mind to the possibility that, hey, maybe this person isn't who I thought she was. And that, you know, that was a big revelation for me. You know something crazy? First of all, shout out to you. I'm assuming you're watching this. You know who you are. I don't know who you are. But you seem like a pretty cool person. And thank you for the eye-opening experience for this mm-hmm. guy. But you know something I was just thinking about? If I put two glasses of water in front of you, okay? Let's say one was from our tap, just average water that you drink. And the other one I got from the glacial streams of the Rocky Mountains. I bring you these two glasses of water. I set them down in front of you right here. When looking at them, you're not going to be able to tell any difference. Mm. But then once you take a sip, you'll know, damn, this water good. Yeah. You'll know, damn, this water's from a glacier. Oh, that's that's the best water I've ever had. But you won't know until you take a sip. So it's the same thing with judgments. Naturally, you'll create an opinion based on what you see. But sometimes you just have to give it the benefit of the doubt to find out maybe this is glacial water, maybe it's tap water. But you'll never know unless you try. Yeah, and I had another... Actually, I know we're running low on time. No, we got time. I had a story about the other day. I was taking the bus. Okay. And, you know, I hopped on the bus, and I saw this guy, and he's, uh, I've seen him in the McDonald's ordering, and, you know, he's a bit of a, he's, he's a loud guy, right? Okay. And he was on the bus. And, you know, he's, like, he's yelling these things and stuff on the bus, and a lot of people are, like, looking at him, like, you know, with that kind of side eye. Yeah. But I stood there, and the whole way there, I didn't even look at him once. I just looked straight forward and I smiled. And I never took notice of it. I never thought of him differently as I would anybody else on the bus. I wouldn't stare at anybody else on the bus randomly, right? That's true. And I thought, man, he's going through a lot of things in his life. And, you know, he was actually holding a big bag full of, like, uh, full of cans and stuff. Mm -hmm. Cans, bottles and stuff. So he might have been going around collecting that. And I was like, you know what? Maybe he's doing a great thing for the environment. And I stood there wondering and I looked around and I see all these people just staring at him as he, you know, yelled and stuff. And I thought to myself, you know, this guy probably doesn't even know what he's doing is wrong. Or, well, perceived to be as wrong. But he still goes about his life in probably a happy manner because he, it didn't affect him. In the same way, him being that way didn't need to affect me. I could have sat there and been like, oh, my God, I had this super annoying guy on the bus, ruined my entire day. But did it, really? Because it only would have ruined it if I let it. If I sat there and said, oh my God, I have to listen to this guy, you know, like this for 25 minutes while I'm on the bus. Then it would have been, you know, I probably would have had a bad day. But I sat there and I was like, you know what? He's doing something great for the environment. And he's out here living his life. He's unbothered. And what's normal to me isn't what's normal to him. So to him, he could be living his normal life. Who am I to sit here and judge who he is or who he should be? I'm not going to dictate his life. Me being stressed about that isn't going to change it. So why would I sit here and act as if it would? That is that is crazy. That is mm. such a good point to make. But you want to know the even more fascinating thing about that story? Yeah. 
I hate to break it to you, but there's a very good chance that that guy was just scrounging for bottles to return to the bottle depot to make money. But some people would have the perception that he's homeless and he's finding a way to make ends meet. You saw it as he's helping the environment. And I think that's a beautiful thing, that you saw the good in somebody instead of jumping to negative conclusions. And the truth is, you just got to pay attention to what you're focusing on because that is what you'll find. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming along with us on this almost hour-long ride. We appreciate every single one of you. And we appreciate the support because sometimes we can be a little bit inconsistent with things. But I promise that we face adversities, but we bounce back. That's the biggest thing. No matter how many times you get knocked down, it only matters if you can get back up. But before we go, as always, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Quote of the Week. Her. We are back. Anyways, the quote of the week this time. Don't even have to look at it. I lied. I have to look at it. I have okay. to just double check. Yeah. Yep, we're good. Okay. The quote of the week. Don't fear the storm. Learn to dance in the rain. And do you know who said that? I've heard the quote, but I can't pinpoint who it is. Gordon Ramsay. Wow, really? That's what I thought too. Huh. When I heard that he said it talking to somebody. And I sat there for a minute. And it just hit me in a very profound way because like you said about that interaction with that person, you never would have thought for them to be that kind of, you know, person. So when I heard Gordon Ramsay say, I was like, damn, Ramsay, not only are you cooking up in the kitchen, you're cooking up with the quotes too. <laughs> He's got the sauce, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. But the biggest thing is life will hit you hard if you let it. Things don't have to be a big deal. Those little inconveniences, I'm sure that, you know, might irritate you a lot in the, in the moment. You'll get over it. You'll make it through, and things will be fine. And remember, sadness is only real if you let it be. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to episode 19 of the Bird Horizons podcast. Almost at the t- big 20 mark. Really excited for next week's episode. But thank you guys again for sticking around all the way to the end. Make sure that you realize that what is won't be. Things will change, and you only... You get to dictate what your environment's like, and you get to dictate the peace in your own mind. And with that, make sure you live a positive life, y'all. Peace out.